So an axiom is a statement or proposition that's been established over time and generally accepted as true. Welcome to the Ageless Runner. I'm Ralph. If you enjoy running and learning about running like I do, please consider subscribing to my channel by clicking the subscribe icon down in the corner of this video. Thank you so much. So over the years of running, I've picked up these rules of thumb or axioms. Some of them you may know, some of them you may not, that I'd like to share with you. These are some of my favorites. Maybe give you a little explanation of what's behind them and why they are what they are. A headwind slows you down more than a tailwind speeds you up. So there's been many times I'm out doing a run and I turn a corner and immediately I've got a headwind. And boy, you can feel it, especially if I'm a bigger frame guy and you feel all that wind resistance on you. It just typically slows you down. If you want to keep the same pace, you've got to work harder. We don't always want to work harder because we're trying to conserve our energy for our run. So it typically slows you down a little bit. And of course, turning around, going back the other direction, doesn't necessarily speed you up. All of a sudden you realize, hey, I'm running at my normal pace, but I'm doing it much easier. So typically plan, if it's breezy out, you're going to have a slower pace. Be sure you eat a protein after workout, especially a hard workout. After exercise, especially intense exercise, you should always have a protein within 30 to 60 minutes. And the reason for that is you get these little micro tears in your muscles, and it's the building and repairing those micro tears that creates the strength and the muscle build in your body. Protein helps that repair. Protein helps build that muscle. But I want to supplement that rule a little bit, and that is if you've done a long run, you probably have no more glycogen in your body because you used it all up doing a run. So also add a carbohydrate. So the new axiom or rule of thumb ought to be consume a protein and a carbohydrate within an hour of your run. Increase mileage by no more than 10% a week. Typically it's advised to not increase mileage by more than 10% a week. And that's a good rule of thumb. Certainly I have violated that in the past. I don't always follow that as a rule. For example, I did a 14 mile run last week. I'm gonna try and do 16 miles the next, my next long run. That's more than 10%, but I'm training for a race. I feel in pretty good shape. I think I can push that a little bit. But maybe you come to a time when you don't think you can do 10%, in which case, listen to your body and don't do 10%. Generally speaking, a mile a week is pretty good unless you're in the very early stages of running where you're just running a few miles at a time. But generally, a mile a week or 10% is a good uh, marker to increase mileage. The longer the run, the slower the pace. So the longer your plan run, the more you need to slow down your pace. Again, we want to conserve our energy. You want to finish that 10 mile run or that 15 mile run. So you need to slow your pace down. Now, if you're doing the Galloway run, walk, run, what that means is shorten your run time or, and or lengthen your walk time. That will help you slow down your overall pace. Now, a corollary to longer runs need a slower pace is temperature. The hotter it is outside, the more you need to slow down your pace. Same thing, you, it's very hot outside, you're gonna be expending energy, you don't wanna get heat struck. Slow down your pace a little bit. Don't focus only on running, be sure to cross train. So only doing running means you're only working the same muscles in your body. And you, we need to cross train, you need to do some other things for your body to help in general fitness. Whether you ride a bike or a stationary bike or do an elliptical, do something else other than just running periodically. But what's really important is you need to do some weight training, whether it's your own body weight or going to the gym and using weight machines or dumbbells or barbells. And there's two reasons for that. The first reason is if you only do running, you only do long distance running, you could actually lose muscle mass. This hit me really hard a couple of years ago. I used to always get this regular physical, and as part of that physical, they would measure my body mass as far as percent fat, percent water, through some kind of impedance machine. And about a year after I started running, I had my checkup, and they said I'd lost some muscle mass, mostly in the upper body. They said my, my lower body was good because I was a runner, but not my upper body. So they told me to increase my weight training to, buy, to try and prevent that muscle loss. So you need to do some weight training. And also, if you're an older runner like me, as we get older, we need to maintain our muscle mass. So it's very important to incorporate strength or weight training, whether it's body weight or weight machines, in your training. Dress as if it's 10 degrees warmer. So a rule of thumb you hear a lot is dress as if it's 10 degrees warmer, 10 to 20 degrees warmer, and that works pretty good if you're in the middle of the summertime or in the middle of the winter, because during your run, the temperature may not change a lot. I find it more of a struggle during those changing seasons in the spring and the fall. For example, if I go outside in the morning and it's 40 degrees Fahrenheit, but the sun is shining brightly, it may warm up 10 to 15 degrees just over the course of my run. So I need to dress a little lighter, keeping that in mind. But if I go outside and it's 40 degrees out, but it's overcast, it's kind of gloomy and dark, and there's a slight breeze, it's not going to warm up much. I'm going to be colder throughout my run, so I need to maybe dress a little warmer. So you kind of, kind of judge it by itself, but the reason for that rule is 
you know you're going to get warm when you start running, so you want to dress a little lighter. So a good idea when you start your run, if it's not the summertime, but a good idea when you start your run is you want to be a little chilly, and that as you run and heat up, you won't get overheated. The other suggestion is, of course, dress in layers. So if you get too hot, you can take something off and maybe uh, carry it in your backpack. If you have a backpack, or like me, I have a running jacket, I'll take it off and tie it around my waist and bring that with me. So dress as if it's 10 degrees warmer and, try, and, and underdress rather than overdress. Prepare for the mental battle. Long runs can especially be hard mentally because we're out there and we're running and we start to get tired, we start to get some aches and pains, and we want to quit because it's just getting hard. So some things you can do to help with that. One is, uh, like me, the reason I uh, do my long runs is I'm training for a race. Maybe I'm training for a half marathon or a trail marathon, and so I realize the importance of meeting that training objective, and that kind of helps keep me motivated, helps me power through uh, uh, maybe any aches or pains or tiredness I may have to try and meet my training bogey. Another thing you can do is listen to music, of course. My daughter likes to listen to podcasts. That may work. Another suggestion is split your run up into segments. If you're going to do a 10-mile run, maybe you think of it as two five-mile runs. Get one five-mile run done, maybe take a short break, eat something, drink something, do the second five-mile run. That may help you accomplish that. Now, the other thing that I've used are mantras. You know, those things you repeat over and over to yourself to try and keep you motivated in the right direction. For example, one mantra that I use is I say, I am a strong runner. I am a strong runner. And I keep repeating that over, not throughout the whole run, but just when I'm getting into those times when I'm feeling a little tired or a little um, weak and want to keep powering through that. There's all kinds of mantras out there. You could say, I run easily, I run fast. Or if you're doing a hill, you can say, hills are my friends, and you run up that hill and just get through that. Now, when I suggest you repeat a mantra through your whole run, I think that'll zone you out. Pretty soon you'll, you'll lose track and maybe stumble or fall. Uh, but just use it in those particular periods during your long run where you're having some difficulty. Give yourself a positive mental motivation. I am a strong runner. I am a fit runner. I run easily. Whatever works for you, repeat that over and over. So if you have any rules or axioms that you'd like to share, please feel free to comment down below. And again, if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe to my channel by clicking that subscribe icon. Thanks again for watching.